We call on all concerned parties to do their job, to reach to the constitutional law and the elections law, which is expected to come. Uh, so you're seeing some of what is being said, at least in the very opening of the Berlin conference. Uh, but the problems that the prime minister pointed to are still very great. And one of them, of course, is still the continued influ influence of the warlord um, Khalifa Haftar. Tell me about what kind of power uh, he still wields and the problems that that will continue to create for Libya. Obviously, uh, Haftar is a major player in um, uh, Libya. Uh, he's been backed by Russia, uh, Egypt, and United Arab Emirates. Recently, over the last uh, uh, few days, he captured uh, the uh, southwest of the country near the Algerian borders, and he blocked, basically, or closed the Algerian borders uh, to, uh, uh, to show uh, his strength and that he is a very important uh, player in Libya's, uh, in Libya's politics uh, today. However, uh, the fact that there has been a truce over the last uh, year or so that uh, Libya has won uh, the, uh, the current prime minister, Beba, as the interlocutor valable by the international community. Now they are speaking uh, to him, and he is talking to the international community as the voice uh, of Libya. The fact that uh, Haftar has not disrupted uh, any of the ongoing steps, at least in a violent uh, manner, uh, suggests or we are much more optimistic that a deal would be uh, done over the last few days. And, you know, one thing that we hear from many sides as contributing to continued problems are uh, the presence of foreign fighters, uh, foreign intervention, the, the continued flow of arms into Libya. Tell me more about this. Well, obviously, uh, uh, in the first conference uh, back in October 2020, uh, the major backers of the Libyan factions have at least pledged to stop sending arms uh, to uh, Libya. Let's uh, agree on one thing, that the warring factions in uh, Libya are doing war by proxy. We, on the one hand, we have uh, Turkey as the major player supporting the uh, Tripoli uh, government. On the other hand, we have Russia, Egypt, and United Arab Emirates uh, supporting the east of the country. Both parties have what they call their own mercenaries and foreign supporters. Syrians, on the one hand, uh, su supported by the Turks in the east of the country. And uh, Khalifa Haftar is having a lot of uh, mercenaries from uh, mainly uh, Chad and also the Sudan. One of the main points for this particular uh, conference in Berlin, and I uh, and I believe that the Prime Minister knows the importance of these foreign fighters, call them mercenaries, and uh, their absence would play a very important role in the rebuilding of uh, uh, Libya. And hence, one of the major points that will be discussed in this particular conference is getting rid of these foreign fighters and unifying the army. There will be, uh, I mean, the Prime Minister talked about national reconciliation, and one of the main sticking points when we talk about the uh, unification of the uh, Libyan army is what will happen to the Libyan militia. Will they be included in the regular security services police and the military, what would be the reaction of the other side? I believe this is a very important point, because Libya, like your guest, uh, uh, your uh, analyst said a few minutes ago, is a tribal uh, society. Some of these militia have been involved in uh, mass killings of Lib uh, Libyan civilians. To what extent? would the Libyan accept that those militias on both sides would be unified in a national army? What guarantees do we have that these 
uh, tribes will not try to take revenge against those individuals uh, being uh, who have uh, who have committed such atrocities. So it's a delicate balance between peace at the expense of justice or achieving justice uh, at the expense of peace. Extremely complex situation there. Youssef Bouandel, thank you. Thank you very much.